Tara, good afternoon. Hey, Jeff. How are you going? Not too bad. How's the week been treating you? Are you still mulling over the, the topics that we engaged last week? <laughs> um, yeah, I am actually. Yeah, I've had some really... Um, uh, in the in this in the small amount of time that I have, where I can actually think about other things outside of you know parenting and, and life and and work, yeah. Um, yeah, I've really been mulling over a few things, and I'm, I'm interested actually to have a chat with you about them, whether it's today or another time. I definitely no, well, I'm you know like what we talked about, Tara. You know, let's just just let it be, because I'm also very curious to see was there something that that really stuck in your mind when we had that conversation last week, or yeah. Yeah, yeah, there was. Um, so I guess, you know, we had we had that discussion about um, learning to detach from, I guess, ideas, concepts, things, emotions, people, everything, um, everything right? Everything yep. in life. Yep. Okay. And so I, I kind of took that away and I thought about it and I thought, how would this work in my life if I were to do this, right? And one, I couldn't quite see a future <laughs> which I would have the capacity to do it if I was going to be a child artist. Yep. Um, but also it, it became a thought process of, well, then how do you attribute meaning? So for me, I guess in my life, meaning is so vital to everything I do. Literally, mm-hmm. my, my life, my world, every, every aspect of who I am revolves around a sense of meaning. And so I thought, well, if we detach from all things, how it, does that mean we detach from our ability to derive or find or designate meaning in our lives? And so I guess that's where I was in a bit of a conundrum. I was like, well, can you have a meaningful life while also being detached from everything in life? And it is a contradiction. Yeah, like I, and I, I, I didn't come to a conclusion. Okay. That's What's your that definition point. of a meaningful life, Tara? Well, so this is this was the <laughs> next step of my thought process was okay, yeah. well, who defines meaning, right? Exactly. What What is meaning, and how do we, and again, how do we attribute meaning, and how do we find meaning, and what does meaning actually mean? And so, you can see, I went through a rabbit hole. <laughs> just okay trying to work out what all of that meant and then again bring it back to how do we have a life filled with meaning while also detaching yourself from everything else yeah yeah okay Uh, i well you got well i knew there was something coming up in your mind right um why is meaning so important to you tara um I guess it's the point of everything for me, right? Okay. It, it's the beginning and kind of end of everything for me. So I, years ago, I read the book, uh, I think it was Man's Search for Happiness by Viktor Frankl. I don't know if you know. know I've the heard book. of the title, Tara, but I've never read the book. Yeah, it, it's um, written by a man who was a Holocaust survivor. So he was in a concentration camp. I think his wife, uh, a oh, wife. Oh, right. Family. Yes. I think I downloaded the Kindle sample actually briefly. Oh, yeah, you should read it. It's a great book. Yeah. But um, yeah. and he <clears throat> he talks about when he was in this concentration camp, and I can't remember which one it was. Yeah. Um, he he was a psychologist, I believe, before he went in there into the concentration camp. And he watched and tried to work out what differentiated those that survived from those who didn't. Um, and he said, you know, there were people who were in exactly the same circumstances, who could be in the exact same health condition, um, but some continued to make it through and some didn't and and kind of what he discovered was that men could endure anything as long as there was meaning to what he was going through right which is a big a big call to make when you're sitting in a concentration camp like to find meaning in that moment would be uh really definitive (laughs) for your life Mm. but for a lot of people's lives right it's it's also hope yeah well, but it, but is it is hope and meaning the same thing? Like, is it because mm. I, I'm asking the tough questions, aren't I? It's like, no, no, this is brilliant, Tara. Um, okay, so getting back to this person who 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 was in the concentration camp. Yeah. Um, so he he essentially came to the conclusion that yeah, in life you can go through anything and you can endure it and you can survive it as long as there's meaning to it, right? Um, and and life is 
ultimately a game of survival, isn't it? Like, you know, we're, mm. we're kids, you know, we're, we're forging our path in this forage, like forest of unknown entities. Like we're, we, we don't know our path. We don't know what we're doing. We're relying on others. Um, you become a teenager. Again, you're going through those, like those, you know, life defining identity moments. You get married, you have kids again, all of these phases of life <laughs> are difficult, right? In they some are. way or form. They are. Um, maybe childhood sometimes, depending on who you are, can be the least. So sometimes it can be the worst part of it, but mm. we get through it because there's a sense of meaning or a sense of purpose to it. Right. Correct. And so when we withdraw from engaging with meaning or purpose, um, how does that then impact the way we live our life? Okay. So just confirming, Tara, how can, one, how can a person have meaning of life if he or she does not attach him or herself to the meaning? Is that correct? Is that the question? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. I think that's now, I know, now, I know last week we talked about it. So I think it's important I give you a bit of a how I sort of see attachment. Mm. Now, when I say attachment, Tara, I mean attachment in the sense that I see things as very transient. Mm -hmm. And for me, since life is so transient, and you might hear me say the phrase, this too will pass. Now, in times when it's good, when times it's bad, right, I know inevitably that this will pass. So therefore, I do not attach myself too much to the good times and the bad times. Mm. Now, when it comes to meaning, um, I have two thoughts here, Tara, right? Mm. You know how last week we talked about me sort of enjoying it day by day? Yeah, yeah. Now, if I enjoy things day by day, I therefore do not think about tomorrow. Yeah. If I don't think about tomorrow, that means there is no preconceived notion of what that meaning is. Mm. Does, it, does that make sense, Tara? Yeah, 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 um, yeah. yeah. So, so keep in mind, I'm trying to articulate it as well because it's actually got me thinking when you got, I, when it got yeah. you thinking, it then got me thinking, right? Um, so. <laughs> Now, the question is, do I believe in there is a meaning of life? So like I said, there's two schools, there's school thoughts here in my mind. Mm. There's one side of me that says, you know what, there's, there's no meaning to life. Yeah. And we humans, we complicate things. We, we try to attribute meaning because that will give us purpose in life. Mm. For me, it's important to me, Tara, but what's more important to me is that I live day by day. Yeah. And whether that negates having that meaning, you know, one could then surmise that that's probably the case, right? Yeah, I, I think that, yes, because I think to me, when I think of meaning, it's retrospective and it's forward thinking, right? Meaning is almost never expressed in the, per, in the present, right? Correct. So Exactly. Your yeah, so your concept of living in the present then, I'm like, well, then how, if you, if you try to live a life where you avoid retrospect and you avoid thinking ahead in the future. Correct. How do you then, um, and, and I guess, how do you feel like, because meaning as well, it doesn't have to be an ultimate meaning of life. It could be a meaning for an experience that you're having or a, mm -hmm. the meaning mm -hmm. of the love that you have for your children or that, you know, the, the drive and passion you feel in your career or what have you, whatever it might be, right? Meaning can be small as well as large, right? But it is always, always retrospectively understood and uh, I guess futuristically placed because Correct. we're looking at how is this in the past how is this now benefiting my purpose or my understanding or my comprehension of my present state and my future state? Um, so I guess. I, yeah. think, okay, I think for me, okay. So, so meaning to me, Tara, in, in the context of living day by day, 
when I when I say meaning, I I I for me, it's about what is my purpose here in this world. Mm. And to yeah. me, that's what I would define meaning to be. Yeah. And when we first chatted, Tara, I was curious to see what your definition of meaning is. Mm. Because like what you said, right, it could mean many different things, right? Yeah. Uh, in my sense, in terms of how I live my life, I see meaning as why am I here? What's my purpose mm. in life? Now, yeah. since I live it day by day, um, my meaning is within that day. Don't get me yeah. wrong, right? I still plan for the future. Yeah. I, I still have dreams in a sense of doing X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. But fundamentally, that's less important. What's more important is that I just stay in the present. Okay, so, so you're looking at, um, at life as day-tight compartments, right? Um, I like, see life as now. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think that's, uh, I think it's a beautiful thing. And I think, and as I said to you the other day, that when we, when we discussed it, it's like a nigh on impossible thing for the majority of the population, right? Like it's a difficult it's, place it's, to get to. It is a surreal feeling sometimes, Tara. Yeah, it is. It is. It's absolutely amazing. <laughs> yeah, I uh, sometimes don't get me wrong, Tara. It, it, it doesn't. It's not all the time, right? Yeah, I will have my days where, like for example, I was late, Tara, to to this conversation, and mm. and I will be lying to you if I wasn't kicking myself going. Oh man, how's how am I going to resolve that leak issue tomorrow? Yeah, but then I need to pull myself back and go. You know what? What's done is done for today. Mm -hmm. I was actually on a conversation with my property manager. Yeah, and um, she was absolutely bamboozled about what was happening. So it got me over time. And and needless to say, I was quite ruffled up myself before I got into this conversation. But I'm very thankful that I know that in two minutes' time, I'm talking to Tara. Yeah. So by thinking of you, you then alerted me to take myself back into the present and to give my attention to you. Yeah. So yeah. it takes time to be able to get in, get out. But yes, what I'm sharing with you mm. I believe is the ultimate gift. Yeah. It is. It is. So, yeah. Can I ask you a question? Sure. So, you know, you've, you've mentioned that you prepare for the past, for the future. Sorry. You prepare for the future. I plan. Uh, you, you have ideas and, and I, um, you know, pursuits that you know that you want to fulfill in the future at some point. Correct. And I understand that you've got a, You've got the ability to detach from them or understand that they may change or that life will continue to evolve in a way that they may happen or they may not. Correct. Now, the, the future is like this really ephemeral concept, right? Like it, yep. it doesn't exist yet. No, um, it's no, not it solid. No. It's not defined. It's not, it's not organized. Um, it's this open space that we can live, be, pursue, do whatever we want in it. But the antithesis of that is that the past is solid and defined and um, fulfilled. And, and so my question to you would be, in the way that you live, mm -hmm. do you have, do you take time to review the past? Or to you is that, like you said, well, what's done is done. I can't do anything about it. Um, or is there times where you take stock of your day or the day before or the week before or the year or 10 years before um, and Good question. think on that? Yeah. Think on it in the sense of reflecting, Tara? Yeah. Yeah. On reflecting, yeah, because I think reflection <clears throat> is the basis of reviewing the past that, that, that then leads to meaning or understanding. And I'll explain my kind of concept of meaning to you as well, but I'm interested to know how you, how you, how you deal with the past. How I suppose you... with the past, Tara, I agree. Um, 
if, if one were to study history and, and one were to look at the past, you can learn quite a lot. Um, mm. I do reflect. Yeah. I do see what has happened. I do understand it. But I suppose for me, I, then, I don't attach myself to the past. Mm. I take the learnings and I bring it back into the present. Yeah. So I, that's how I deal with the past. But overall, like what you said, past is past. Mm. What's done is done. Yeah. And being human, a human is a human, right, Tara? Yeah. This state doesn't last indefinitely, Tara. I, mm. I am human. But I suppose I'm thankful in the sense that I do recognize when I do slip into the past or do I get too into the future, I need to bring myself back. Yeah. So that has come through, I don't know, experience, training myself. That's yeah. how I deal with the past. It's okay. past, it's gone. I leave it as it is. I still reflect. I still will learn because history does repeat itself, right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> so I need to learn from it. Yeah. Now, in an odd way, right? Now, if you ask me what tool do I use to help me stay in the present? Now, you're probably going to laugh at me when I say I this, won't. right? I promise. <laughs> now, this tool has had such a profound effect on me, right? It's only recently that it dawned on me as to why it's working so well. Now, yeah. have you got an iPhone, Tara, or have you got an Android I phone? Do. You got an, an iPhone. iPhone. Do you use yeah. the Apple iOS Reminders app? No. Okay. I do, right? Now, when okay. I use it, right, I've got categories in terms of shares, crypto, investments, fun, kids, mm -hmm. education, the median podcasts, um, consulting, for example, right? Yeah. And when I open up the app in the morning, I only see, you know, tasks that are due today. Yeah. That keeps me in the present. Mm -hmm. If you go to me, Tara, that, you know, I'm still looking forward to it. When you come to meet your mom, you know, in, in the area again, right? I'm looking forward yeah. to seeing you in person where we grab a coffee, right? Yeah. But when that time comes, that's a reminder I put, I don't know, in three weeks' time, right? Mm -hmm. It's out of my head now. Yeah. That's in the future. I focus on the present. So mm -hmm. in, in a weird sort of way, using this reminders app has been a very interesting tool to allow me to just focus on what I need to do today. Yeah. If there is a problem that I need to deal with, for example, the leak, for example, right? I've done what I I've done what I've done today, i.e., speak to the property manager. Yeah. When when tomorrow comes around, it's tomorrow's problem. Yeah. Yeah. And I think. <clears throat> And I think we had a bit of a discussion about this uh, when we last spoke. And I, I wonder if then the ability to be present is, is a, a privileged place to be, right? Um, because we're in a situation in which, you know, we have a roof over our head. We have yeah. money in our bank account. We have food in our home. Um, so daily survival is not a is not a thing for say you or I, right? It, it's almost taken for granted because it's such an easy thing for us to come by. Correct. Um, but yeah, I wonder if, if that ability, which for say for you and I to live in, in the present, which would be difficult for me, just the way, the, the way that I'm built um, is, is, a, is a place of privilege because if we lived below the poverty line, would it be as simple to say that we only worry about the things of today? Um, you know, if we lived in a third world country or if we lived in a place where, um, you know, we might eat one meal every three days, um, you know, is it, is, it a, is it a place of privilege that allows us to be present? You know, it was interesting, Tara. I was actually reading a, an article about a couple of months ago how... A lot of what's happening in the world is very much privileged thinking. Yeah, it is. And it is. Yeah, it is. Like um, the latest iPhone, for example. 
um, the latest investment, for example. Mm. You know, this is very privileged thinking because when you have someone who can't meet the basic needs of food, water, water and shelter, right? Do they yeah. even think about these things? Do they, would they even worry about the next crypto project that pays mm -hmm. 60% annual percentage yield? No, they're not going to think about that, right? They're yeah. more likely to be thinking about, you know, how do I put food on the table? Yeah. And your question is, is living in the present a privileged sort of undertaking? Um, mm -hmm. I'm not too sure, Tara. Maybe it is. Yeah. I can see where you're I, coming from. Yeah. Because if I'm talking to you, Tara, right, and mm -hmm. I'm struggling to pay the bills, I don't have a roof over my head, would it change me? You know, obviously, it's a scenario where um, it's hard, to, you know, it's possible to get into and what, but it's very hard to sort of understand and gauge it, isn't it? Yeah, um, but... It, oh Oh, maybe it's not though, because maybe when you take away the, you know, the layers of luxury that we enjoy mm -hmm. as your everyday middle class people, um, that living in the present, you know, if, if you're in that situation where you're worrying about putting food on the table, you are constantly living in the present because you're not worrying about five years time. You're not worrying about the bill that's coming in three months time. You're just worrying about how do I get bread and how do I get it today? So I guess then that leads to is, you know, depending on your circumstance in life, I guess living in the present, we kind of try attribute values of positive or negative to it because for you, it's a positive. It allows you to strip away um, the unnecessary and the and the luxury that can sometimes distract us from you know the humanness of who we are right correct yeah um but then for another person um it forces them to confront concerns and worries and um and needs that they have right in that moment so i guess I've come into the conversation and I left that conversation with you having this very Dalai Lama sense <laughs> of like, wow, like you've reached, you've reached the epitome of what life should be like this inner peace moment. But so I attributed this like really positive value to it, but I've like kind of as I've tried to like pull away like the the meaning and the layers from it I've kind of gone okay well actually maybe it's neither positive nor negative maybe it's, it's dependent on your circumstances dependent on your privilege it's dependent on the place you are it's dependent on why you're present you're present because you see a need to be um, able to find peace and um and, a, and a, a, yeah, a sense of peace in life, I feel like. Whereas yeah, like I am. I, I, if, if someone would ask me, what do I want in life? It's just peace of mind, Tara. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. And yeah. Um, you made a good, you know, you, you really, well, <laughs> you got me thinking again, or whether it's privilege thinking. I think um, the, the short answer is, Tara, I don't know. Mm. What I do know is that, I don't think we, you and I can say it's good, bad, positive or negative because no. we're all so different. Yeah. We're all so unique. And I think yeah. um, this has been a journey, Tara. Yeah. And, and you know, when we first sort of re-engaged, um, you know, like I said, you know, a lot has happened in 25 years mm. between, between in your life, in my life, and, and it's very much a journey. Um, and, and maybe it comes back to that idea of meaning again, right? Like your, maybe your sense of presence is based on a sense of meaning and the meaning of your life is to enjoy that moment, right? Um, and the meaning of another person's life might be to survive. The meaning sure. of their life is to survive and shelter a child or to sustain the life of an elderly parent or what have you, right? So it comes back to that thought that we can't maybe, and again, I'm coming to this, this, this chat with you 
devoid of any answers, right? Yeah. I have no answers. After all this mulling over, all of this um, thinking, I don't come with any answers. I come with lots of questions and a lot of thoughts, right? Um, but it comes back to this sense, can we actually live life without meaning? Can we actually detach from meaning? And I, I don't know that we can. I don't, that, I, I don't know. I don't know the answer, but I don't know that we can. Got it. it it'll be good to understand, Tara. Obviously, we can have a conversation again. Right? I'm very curious to understand what is your definition of meaning, number one? Mm -hmm. Why is it so important to you? Yeah. Number two? Yeah. Um, and thirdly, um, what is it about what is it about the meaning itself in terms of what does it do for you? So what do we say? So number one? Yeah. Definition. Definition of meaning. Importance. Importance. Three. What does it mean to value. you? Value. Right. Okay. Um, do, 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 do you have to answer me now? Um, okay. I, I suppose I'm just very curious to understand because obviously in your responses, Tyra, you mm -hmm. know, obviously there was the whole part about family history. We were very interested mm -hmm. about it. But at the same time, there was a second component where you talked about impact. Yeah. Um, is impact synonymous with your meaning? No, I would say no. Yeah. Because I think for me, meaning is all about understanding. That, that's meaning what meaning is. Brilliant. There you go. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So that's, that's maybe your definition. Maybe, maybe. And, and just leave space for that to continue to evolve and develop. And, and, and you, you know what? But I think for me, and as you said, you know, obviously I'm a genealogist. I, I study people's family history. I study my own family history. Mm. Um, and, you know, we've been in history classes together through high school. So I can't remember um, a single thing, Tara. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember very little. Um, <laughs> uh, but um, I think I got kicked out of more history classes than I was probably ever kept in. But it's okay. But you, were, you weren't missing much, Tara, because, uh, yeah. because one memory yeah. about history class, it was basically here's a projector, here's yeah. some slide, <laughs> copy whatever's on the front, into your book. That's all yeah. I remember. I think that was I think that was a, a pretty good um, replica of what we experienced. Um, okay, you, 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 you didn't miss anything. <laughs> no, so I, I've always loved history, though, right? I've yeah. always got a connection to history, and I think for me, <clears throat> where you come to a sense of peace in life, it comes from living in the present. Whereas mm. I think for me where I come to a sense of peace in life is when I can develop an understanding um, and a reasoning and a value to either what I've gone through or what people I love have gone through or what my ancestors have gone through uh, or what we as a nation have gone through. I think it, I, I think it's, it goes from the smallest you know, relationship right up to the largest can be impacted by this, right? Mm. So for me, it's understanding. And, and I had a chat with you about that when, when we were talking the other day, right? Like there were things growing up I just didn't understand as a child, as a teenager, even if I'm honest until I was like an early adult. And, um, and, and I actually kind of went into genealogy quite accidentally. So essentially, mm. I had been doing family history on and off since I was about 15 years old. My mum was really into it. Um, occasionally, I'd go and like spin through a microfilm machine, which was like so boring. And I just, I, I kind of didn't like it. I detested it. Um, and then, you know, fast forward a few years and Ancestry.com comes along and they've digitized everything and it's accessible and it's user-friendly and what have you. And um and I was like, wow, this is really interesting. I can actually learn about my grandparents. I can actually learn about my three times great grandparents. I can actually know where they lived and who they were and what they did and when they died. Um, and in that moment, like, I was like, wow, this is profound. Like, this is actually really profound. Um, and from that point on, I loved family history. I loved mm. genealogy. I loved what it could do, right? Um, and then it kind of went a step further. So, um, for me, obviously, family history has evolved over the years um, and it's changed what it looks like and how it's done and, and who contributes to it. Um, and one of the things I was living in America for a year and a half and 
one of the things I felt really strongly I needed to do was to have my dad write me letters while I lived in America. And when he, I asked him to write these letters, I asked him to tell me stories about his life, right? My dad was English. We weren't raised around his family. Um, he only had the opportunity a couple of times to go back home after he moved here. Um, mm. So, yeah, I asked him to do this. And when I came home, I started recording his oral histories. And, and what that kind of did for me was helped me understand parts of my childhood that had made me very angry and that had made me quite, um, I, you know, areas of my childhood I hadn't understood, right? And when I, yeah, sorry, Jeff. It's just, I'm, I'm just curious, Tara, is that the core driver deep down? For me? Correct. The, the sense of understanding? Of your, or, of your childhood. Um, because I'm no, curious to see what's really motivating you or what's really set the spark for you to really understand like you mentioned meaning is synonymous with understanding right so yeah. i'm very curious to see hmm. is it because of your childhood where there were a lot of things that like you said you didn't understand yeah. is that really driving you now as a woman as a mom as a, as a career professional as a person um, I think it, it, it probably, it is in some ways, but I think it's just the underpinning of purpose, right? Like for me. Purpose I, meaning or was that like, different? Like my life purpose or just purpose in everything I do, right? It has mm. to have this like sense of understanding and meaning, right? Because, and you know this, you've got two kids. Um, I've got four, you know, I've got, you know, I've got a lot of kids. Um, and a lot of the work that you do as a parent is um, monotonous um, and at times it can be uh, a real struggle on a mental level to either cope with challenges or just to be able to constantly be on the level of, of people that are, um, you know, require so much from you. Um, and I guess the reason we do it is because there's meaning to it, right? And that meaning mm. is potentially love, right? It's love. But then what's the meaning of love? What's the point of love? What's the point of this emotion? Is it just so that we like look after our young and then we put them into the world so that they can then have young and, and do the same thing? If you want to go down to bare bones, is that the purpose of it? Or is it um, that there is purpose within the purpose, with the uh, meaning within the meaning, you know? And and I think this is where you go down the rabbit hole. But I think for me, um, the, the need to have understanding is because without understanding, there's, there's really only emotion, right? If you don't understand, you. what's remaining is just emotion. So, so if I want, want to feel... I, I need to bring the cognitive in line with the emotional. So is, that also, feeling... is that similar to sort of saying you want to find the objective to strip out the subjective? No, I want to find the subjective. I don't want the objective. I want the subjective. I want to know why. I want to know who, when. I want to know what what did that impact how did that follow on you know like we look at world war ii right you have all these you have this whole generation of men who go to world war ii right they go away they come home they have like you know little things pinned into their jackets they're these heroes right and then we close the door on them they go home um, we're expecting them to jump into a job have children live this very normal life but the reality is they're shell-shocked they're destroyed like emotionally mentally they're just they're just in ruins right? And the impact of that is you have this generation of children who are born into this like washing machine of emotion and need and want because of, of what's happened to the, the generation of parents who are raising them. And then mm. that has a flow and effect to the generation after them. And how does that impact it? So I guess for me, it all has the understanding, you know, like I, I was raised by World War II babies, you know, babies who were born during World War II. Um, my grandparents were in the wars. Uh, my grandfather served in the wars. My great-grandfather served in, in World Wars. So 
how did that, those decisions, how do those key moments, how do those everyday moments in someone's life impact me today? But also how does that impact the meaning in my life? You know, I was raised in a religious situation. Interesting. Interesting. Got it. Um, and in which you know of, and, um, and I would call myself rel- religious today or, or spiritual or what, whatever you want to call it. Um, But both my parents are the only children in their families who would identify in that same way. Um, And so I guess when you go, well, hang on a second, well, why? Why them? Why me? Um, And and I guess I come back to, and I don't know if I'm making any sense, but I come back to if I want to feel a sense of peace in my life, I have to understand my experiences and I have to understand how they have changed me or changed my environment or changed my context. And I love family history because I can go back and I can do that for the, every generation behind me as well and then see, well, that flow and effect. And, and that has the ability to then change how you impact the next generation and how you impact the next five generations after you because I'm a consequence of five generations before me. Mm. So can my impact, is my impact today that I made a bed, that I worked you know, five hours and that I picked up my kids from school or is my impact the way I love my children or the beliefs that I, I, I share with them or the sense of beauty that I find in simple parts of life? Is that the impact I'm having on them? And then how does that then benefit people well beyond my reach? Does that make any sense? So, wow, you really got me thinking, Tara. This, this is the beauty of these conversations. I don't know where they go, but this has really got me thinking. So just, just so I understand, Tara, your interest in understanding family history stems from the fact that by understanding your past, so to speak, that will then give you understanding of how it has shaped you now. Mm-hmm. And by understanding how it shapes you now, that will then give you peace of mind which will then allow you to create a positive impact going forward. Yeah, I think, I think that's the essence of what I'm saying. Um, yeah, I think okay. so. So I'm very, so getting back to those questions I asked you, right? Don't tell me now, right? So if we go back and go, and I asked you, Tara, what is your definition of meaning? Mm-hmm. Why is it so important to you? And... And then the third one was, how do you feel about that meaning, right? I'm yeah. now curious to see how what you shared with me in terms of family history ties back to those three questions. I suppose the reason why I'm so curious, right, Yeah. is ignore the word meaning, ignore the word purpose, right? Yeah. You, you need understanding because does understanding of something, Tara, provide you with comfort? Um, yes and no. Yes, yes, I would say yes, for me it does. But I guess no, and I'm going to say no, actually, um, because there was this once, I remember my mum and I were driving to Queensland together, right? I just mm. moved back from the States. Um, and my mom in a situation, which wasn't probably where I would probably want to have this conversation kind of divulged something that had happened to her in her life. That was pretty huge. Right. It was like a really Mm. big thing. And I just remember being like gobsmacked, but more than that, I like stopped the car and I got out and I was like, I can't, you can't lay that. You can't tell me that you can't expect me to understand that in a moment like this, right? Like, and I, and I feel in retrospect, I feel for my mom because I understand my mom was trying to give me understanding about herself that I just was not prepared for. So there are times where understanding is definitely unsettling and it's definitely negative and it's definitely doesn't create a sense of peace. But mm. when you move through that emotion, then I look at it now away from that emotion and I go, okay, I get that now. 
I, I, I get why some of the choices she made were made the way they were. I get why she feels sometimes the way that she feels about things, because that moment in her life was so big that it would have changed a lot for her. Um, but then there are other times, like I said to you, where I look back at the past and my own life and I think, oh, that understanding has changed the shape of something, right? So, like, I kind of look at experiences as, as a standalone, you know, it, like you think of it as a tree trunk, right? It's like a standalone tree trunk. But when we have understanding, it's like we're, we're giving it branches and we're giving it leaves and we're fleshing it out and we're making it whole, Right. Um, which is not to say that understanding is objective, like it, which is to say that it, it's definitely not objective, it's subjective, right? It but could you be. flesh out, yeah, but you flesh out this whole tree, right? Um, so, yeah, I think for me, yeah, don't mind, yeah, don't mind me, Tara. I, I just from our conversation, I can really, I think it's a, I think it's a very apparent that it means a lot to you, Tara. Yeah, yeah, it does. You know, well, yeah. just I, I don't understand it. Like, in all honesty, and this is why I said to you, I'm mulling, I'm mulling things. I, you know, I, I, I WhatsApped you and said, I'm mulling things over, Jeff. Like, I'm mulling things over. And every day since I've spoken to you, I've thought about it. Yeah. And I've thought so, about it. so. I, I suppose for me, Tara, when I'm speaking with someone, I'm very curious to understand, understand, right? Where is that yeah. person coming from? And why does that person feel so strongly about that thing and then I ask myself does that person feel so strongly about x because of some sort of childhood thing some sort of incident um, mm. some sort of experience um, so yeah. I'm, very, I'm very curious to strip away the layers um, and the reason and why, the was? yeah, that, yeah, yeah. I'm curious. As, yeah, I, I ask questions because I'm under, I want to. I want to feel where the seed came from, because if I try to think about the seeds for me, right? Yeah. My mind goes blank because past is past. <laughs> yeah. And it, it, it's it's important to. To understand it right but i do not let that guide me going forward in the present day so to see concept to me is very interesting because i do wonder whether people whether it's yourself tara your husband or whatever do we all have that seed that really shapes who we are going forward because for me i could tell you a lot of seeds in my past yeah. um but those seeds are in the past and every day allows me to just be there in the present um therefore i'm not affected by seeds of the past <laughs> if that sort of makes sense yeah yeah so, i think yeah. i i think it's interesting i um I was actually thinking of seeds. Interestingly, the other day I was thinking about gum trees. And I, was, I actually thought, like, what does a gum tree seed look like? Mm. Like, is it tiny? Is it small? Like, how do we get this huge tree that comes from, I assume, some kind of seed? Because I don't know if it's a gum nut. I don't know. I don't know anything about it. But I was thinking about this the other day. But essentially, if I plant a gum nut seed into the ground, today? like a, not a gum nut seed, a, a, a gum tree seed into the ground or a to, rose seed or whatever to, today? you Today? today yeah like yeah oh it's okay. a new day right if i plant it what's going to grow why do you need to know that but no no but i'm just asking like you're you're asking is do our seeds define who we are today and and my immediate thought whether it be right or wrong and maybe i'll go away from this and i'll think more about it and i will change my view <laughs> because i believe as humans that's our point is to continue to understand and learn and change but the but essentially that seed is going to be a, a gum tree right or that mm. seed is going to be a rose bush or, or what have you right and i think in the same ways that we are shaped by every experience that we have in our life. I agree. And we, and we can't move away from that. I can't, no, can't tomorrow decide that I'm a completely different person 
um, and not have any of yesterday, a week ago, a year ago, five years ago, 37 years ago, not also be some of those particles that make up who I am today. Um, and so I guess that's why it's important to me because yes, there's a seed and I probably could define that seed for myself. Um, obviously I can't define it for anyone else, but, but the beauty of family history is allowing other people to understand why that seed started for them and then mm-hmm. why, the, why their life was impacted the way it was. Um, and sometimes, you know, we, we review our life and sometimes people look at their life and think, oh, well, maybe I just wasn't this enough or I wasn't that enough. Or, but maybe the reality was you were carved into a person that you are because of the experiences that happened for the last 20 years, 100 years, 300 years, 500 years. And so I guess an understanding of that is how much of who I am is by choice how much of who I am has been designed by a thousand years of ancestry and experience and how much of who I am is how much of the future that I create is bound to that. If that makes sense without sounding too existential. Okay. And I I, I get now to the present because that will give you an understanding of, of who you are now. Why is it so? Why is it important to think now to the future in terms of its impact? Um, again, this is this kind of drives back to a bit of a conversation that you and I had the other day. Is that there's a part of me, and I haven't probably questioned this enough, mm, mm. but there's definitely a part of me that feels like it's my duty to improve for my children right? Got like, it. and, and to provide. And I think, you know, when you're, you know, you know, you've got a beautiful baby and, and I don't know what the experience like is like for a man. I probably haven't asked my husband that enough, but for a woman uh, in, in most circumstances where mother and child are healthy and, and, you know, and, and um, the situation is a really positive one. Um, you, there's an overwhelming sense of love and connection and desire to provide and look after this, you know, helpless infant, right? Um, and that probably doesn't really change. You know, I'm I'm 12 years into the parenting journey, and I don't feel any less inclined than what I did the moment my 12 year old was born, right? Um, so it's a responsibility for your kids. Yeah, and I and I guess I take up space on this earth. We all do, right? I guess if you want to take it away from that as well, like it's not just that. Um, it's a responsibility to everyone in the world. I I, I love, um, I, you know, is it Ernest Hemingway? I, I, I may have gotten that very wrong, but, um, or, or it's from Don Quixote. I really cannot remember, but it's essentially no man is an island. You know, I think it's it's in the beginning of For Whom, um, for whom the Bell Tolls, right? Um, and the older I get, the more I realize our time is so finite. It's so finite. And like you said, we have no idea what's going to happen tomorrow. We don't know what's going to happen in 10 minutes, let alone, you know, in 10 years. Um, but I guess I've been raised to believe that a contribution is important and, a, and a, an improvement for not just for me or for my children, but for other women, for other mothers, for other humans, for other sons, for other men. Um, is an important part of purpose. Sorry to go back to that word. Oh, no, I no, it makes perfect sense, right? So essentially you're saying, Tara, is that when you do leave this world, you want to leave this world knowing that you made it a better place. Yeah, that I, I warranted the space I took. And not to say that and very, and, and I guess that's a bad way of putting it because I don't feel like any human being has to earn their existence. I do not feel that way. But I do feel like, wow, what an amazing gift, right? What an amazing gift. I'm 37 years old. How blessed am I to be 37 years old? How blessed am I to be able to have all the experiences I've had in my life Mm. right now? What am I going to do to to give back from that, right? If I And I hope if I get to live to 60, 70, 80, that my opinion of... The purpose of my life is the same. What can I give? What can I do? 
How can I understand? How can I share that? How can I help others? Hmm, interesting. I, 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 I have that too. Tara? Yeah. <laughs> so oh, I think out, I, it sounds no like came, came out a bit <laughs> weird, right? Um, <laughs> the reason why it came out a bit weird, Tara, um, is because I think as a side point, we're way, we're, we're so clever humans. Mm. You know, you, you got back, you know, I, I want to take back a point you said about, um, you know, having kids, you know, do we didn't follow the natural progression of growing them up and whatnot. Um, if I were to strip away everything, it just seems like human species has purely just been designed to proc procreate. Mm, yeah. And that, I suppose what we're trying to say, Tara, is that it's, it's getting me thinking, right? I think, I think a lot of us, including myself, and actually, I got it now. The reason why I want peace of mind because it never ends. Yeah. You know. It's infinite. Is, is that it's, what you're it's, saying? It's, it's infinite. infinite. Like when I resigned from my role at a previous software company, right? Mm -hmm. And I did not want to become the VP of sales. Yeah. And then I said, okay, that's fine. What do you then want to achieve, Jeff? And then I said to myself again, Jeff, why is it so important to achieve? Yeah. Isn't that just an endless loop where we're just trying to achieve, 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 achieve? Mm -hmm. So this is, this is a conversation between myself, right? Yeah. And then I said to Jeff, why do you need to achieve all the time? And then I said to myself, because I need to be better. I need to improve. I need to make more mm -hmm. money. I need to do this. I need to do that. I need to do this and this and that. And then I go to myself again. When's it going to end, Jeff? Hmm. It wouldn't. And, and, and I guess I'm, yeah, it, it wouldn't. It, it wouldn't doesn't. end, right? It, would, it doesn't it end, end, right? Like, it's, it's not even about the rat race, Tara. I just want to get off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And, and I guess what I'm saying is, and in the sense of improvement, and, I, and I've thought about this because you'd said that to me in our last discussion, right? And, and I, I, I thirst for, for knowledge that I'm interested in. Like, I love to read. I love I, to I love those 1% gains, Tara. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, I, I love that, right? But I love it because I'm interested. I love it because I'm like, wow, I had no idea. Or because I can look at things and go, wow, that's so complex and beyond me. How incredible that there are things in the world that are so enormous and so complex that they're absolutely beyond my mind. Like I look at the universe and I think, I hey, mm. that's like, it's, it's just world after world after world. It's, it's universe after universe after universe. It's just incredible, right? Um, but I, I, as you were speaking, one of the things that I thought about was my need to improve is not necessarily that I have to have an incredible career. It's not necessarily that I have to seek fame or anything like that. But when my dad died, um, a few observations I took from it. Obviously, there, there was a number of observations I obviously took from it. Um, but the ones that are pertinent to this conversation are these, is that I hated, I absolutely hated people coming up to me and saying that they were sorry i hated it like i just yeah, what do they even like, mean uh, what what are you sorry for yeah, you what are you sorry like, for like i know and i and i and i could swallow it because i understood it came from a good place and i understood it came from a loving place and so therefore i was like you know what and that's where understanding comes back in again right i understand that what you're saying to me and what you're intending are two different things and so i accept the intention and let go of the the act right um, but I remember this moment <clears throat> where this guy who was similar age to me came up to me and he said to me, it was like a, probably a day and a half after my dad had died, the funeral hadn't happened yet. And he said to me, you know, my earliest memory was of your dad coming and pouring concrete at my parents' house. And I, I loved it. I was this little boy who was just 
watching your dad do this and it was amazing my dad was a builder right and um my dad wasn't it wasn't a job that he was getting paid for it was they just needed something done and my dad was there doing it right and um and I just remember saying thank you like that has meant more to me than the the myriad of people have come up to me and told me how sorry they are and um the interesting thing was um after the funeral a whole you know, contingent of people at different times came up to me and told me of these different acts that my dad had done that I didn't know about, um, in which he had blessed their life in some way, not for money, not for fame, not because he would ever talk about it, not because of anything like that, but purely because he could not bear knowing that someone had a need that he could help Mm. and not doing it, right? And, and that's how I feel a little bit. And I, and I feel that way because that's the way I was raised to feel is that if we're not here to help one another, what are we really here for? If we're not here to give in the capacities that we have to give and sometimes take when we need to take, that to me is improvement, right? Mm-hmm. That to me is improving the world. That to me is improving the society we live in and the family that we live in. And it's not an easy thing to do. And I'm not saying I'm great at it. And I'm not saying that um, if you knew me or met me, that would be your instant thought of who I am. But what I'm saying is that is my, that is the intention I have when I say I want to improve. Interesting. You know, just as a side point, right? I do wonder why funerals, for example, there's so much sadness. Mm. Wouldn't it be interesting if you turned it around and you actually celebrated that person's life instead? So instead of saying, you know, I'm sorry for your loss, you would say, hey, I remember your dad did X. I remember Johnny did that. So it's much more of a celebration. And that thought came to me because... Remember how I told you I, I had a doctor who, who's, who's really been my guardian angel, so to speak. Yeah. And she was a person who planted the idea to me that when we pass, it should be a celebration mm. because, you know, by all means there are tragedies when people don't even make it into, you know, one years old or still yeah. and whatnot. That's terrible things, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, but I suppose from her part, you know, she's 83 now. Why does, this is probably not a conversation altogether, but I suppose it's, it's, it brought me into the, it, it came out of me because you said, I'm sorry for your loss. What did that even mean? I know. But it was so much more powerful to you when you had that person mm-hmm. come to you. Hey, I remember your dad. He was actually concreting the front of a house. And that really resonated with you, right? Um, yeah. Because it, it gave meaning, right? To the, to the, and purpose to the life I watched my dad live. It helped me say, oh, okay. So the things that I thought my dad was, he really was. And, and, and that was, yeah, I think it's because it fleshes out the meaning of someone's life. You, you can't, at the end of the day, no one goes to your funeral and says, well, I remember Tara saying that she would help me take my bins out. Right. <laughs> no one's saying that. Cause no. someone might say that. I remember that Tara took my bins out every Wednesday night, right? Because I couldn't do it myself. So we're remembered by who we actually are in our acts. And, and in that, there's a little bit of movement. My husband always says we always idealize the dead, right? We do. We forget all their failings. We forget all their sins. And we kind of start to idealize the people that we love. But We do. And that definitely happens. But, but, but grief as well, you know, on this topic, grief is just is innately a selfish emotion, right? Like we're just where we're sad for what we have lost right like innately like my grief for my dad was my inability to see my dad anymore my inability to spend time with my dad my inability for my children to have my dad so yes it's 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 yeah it is sort of selfish in that sense isn't it it's about us it is about us it's often more about us than it is about the person we've lost because it, it's about our loss from them, right? Not always, but I would, I would, 
I would dare to say the majority of the time. Here's something interesting, Tara. I, I read in the Buddhist book, just getting back to your point about it's quite selfish, right? Mm. Let me give you a hypothetical. Now, I, I think from our conversation, Tara, I, I can share this with you. And yeah. it's just a hypothetical, Tara. And, and I'm going to say this to you because I think we have that connection now, Tara. How would you feel if your husband, you know, went with someone else? Uh, like he left me for another person? Yeah. <laughs> we, had, we had a bit of a discussion about this recently, actually. Um, I think the answer to that, would you like me to be like brutally honest? Just say it. Um, I think the and, answer, I, and I'll tell you and I'll tell you how it goes back to that Buddhist passage I read. Okay, um, it, it would ch it's changed over time. Can I say that? Like, yeah, 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 for sure, for when, sure. When when we're first married, I can remember saying to my husband, "The worst thing that you could ever do to me is to cheat on me or to leave me for another person." Right? Like that would have devastated me. Right. Um, and as life goes on, we've been married almost 14 years. We've been married for quite a while. Um, we had a discussion, that, you know, this morning, actually, we were talking about it and, uh, and we we're talking about just another situation with another couple we know. And I said, you know, I think one of the reasons why our marriage is in a great place is because we have finally, after 14 years, come to the understanding that we are individual people who will make individual choices who will have individual ideas um, and whose life will go the way that we want them to go, right? And we have no control over that. When you're early married and, and you're, you know, you're so consumed by, you know, this future that you have together, you almost try to contain it and control it, right? The attachment. Yeah. Yeah, the attachment. And then as you get older, my love hasn't lessened for my husband. Not at all. In fact, in lots of areas, it's really increased. Um, but the reality is if my husband were to make the choice that this life that we've created together, wasn't what he wanted anymore, I, it would hurt. I'm sure it would hurt, you know, I'm sure it would hurt. We're, for only, both human. Of us. we're only human. We're only human. Right. But I also feel like I would also understand, like, I can't control that. So I don't, I don't worry about it. Because if he wow. makes that choice, like, and he, and he feels the same way towards me. If I were to make that choice, that the consequences would be there for me. The consequences would be there for him um, or, you know, the life decisions. But, but we're both adults who can both make our choices and nothing that each other does or doesn't do controls that, right? Does Beautiful. That the, re the reason why I share that question to you, Tara, um, now we, we've, we've gone, we've gone all over the place, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, You're going to be editing this. For no, like no, no. This, this is, this is what I want. You know, we, we're just having a conversation, Tara. That's the beauty of it all. Right? The reason why I mentioned it to you, right. Is, um, if you truly love that person mm. and he or she left, isn't that a good thing? Because if, since you love them so much, you, you want wanted, their happiness. Do you want their happiness? Yeah. So therefore, that selfishness is gone, isn't it? Yeah. Isn't that pretty yeah. powerful? Yeah. So getting back to the thing about selfishness, right? It is quite a selfish sort of feeling to grieve, right? But then I'm like, okay, that's interesting. <clears throat> then for some reason, you got me into that quote about, okay, what's not selfish is that, yeah, if you really love someone, Tara, and that person left you, we're human, right? We'd be devastated. But at the same time, you're like, wow, if going down that path with a different person really makes my partner happy, mm. then that's brilliant, isn't it? Yeah. Isn't, isn't that true love? Well, that to me, yes. Because I have you ever heard the story of, um, and, I, and it's my, one of my favorite stories about love, right? Um, the Gift of the Magi. Have you ever read The Gift no. of the Magi? A really old story. There's like a black and white film about it at Christmas and, and what have you. But the, the, the really quick concept of The Gift of the Magi is there's this young couple who are married, right? It's like set in, you know, in the 1920s or what have you. Don't have a lot of money. She's got beautiful hair. He has a, fa a favorite like 
pocket watch or, or what whatever it was and it's Christmas time they both want to get the other person this thing that they really love right so the wife goes and cuts off her hair and sells it because it's like the most beautiful thing that she has and the most the thing of most worth and the husband has this pocket watch that he goes and sells and then they go and buy these gifts for one another and to me that is what true love is is sacrifice is, yeah is where you're that the the does the happiness or the needs or or what have you are more important than than you yourself but but there is a limit to that right like i think there's a limit to that but but the idea of yeah that you want what's best for your your spouse or the person that you love and that that should come first and you and both, I had you, you both if, if both parties can do it, it's amazing because you're both looking yeah. out for each other. But then the flip side, of course, is that nothing happens because both of you guys are compromising <laughs> all the time. And and also there's no boundaries. And there's and there's <coughs> people who become unfulfilled because they're not also filling their own cup because they're exactly. worrying about filling their person's cup. And so when my there's husband no right or wrong here, yeah. Yeah, right. Like, and and I think it's that understanding. Um I have a sister who's like just super gentle, like super, super gentle, like loveliest person you'll ever meet, super tender, will always put everyone ahead of herself, right? And I'm always like her, like the fire behind her. I'm always like, you gotta, you know, you gotta do things for yourself and you gotta, you know, look after yourself and you gotta do this, you gotta do that. And recently she started to like become a little bit more, I, I, I like tease her about it. Um, she's Selfish? become a, like, not yeah like but like to like <laughs> very normal levels like not even selfish i would say like more self determined right yeah whereas before if she felt like she was inconveniencing you should stop or she would and i i said to her i'm not sure that i'm like i'm ready for this like self determined person that you're becoming because it's impacting me and it actually led to me to think does anyone in the world whether it's a spouse a parent a sibling a a friend, um, a politician, a teacher, does anyone ever truly have our best interests at heart? Or are, or are those no. interests? No. And that was no. my that was my conclusion. No, even ourselves. Like sometimes I don't have my best interest at heart. Sometimes I sacrifice myself and what I want because I know I need to do it for, for someone else or because I know I need to do it to get something done, even though I know I'm not happy about it. So sometimes I betray my own self. So is, you know, you've got to come to the realization in life that you've got to have your own sense of self and you've got to have your own sense of self-determination in order to really be the person and to have peace and to have a sense of fulfillment and contentment. And, and for me, your, your sense of peace, to me, that's con that's what I call contentment, right? Like I think the most elusive thing that we can have in life is true, true contentment. Um, not only where we're at peace, but where we also feel like, well, and I guess for you, it's probably synonymous, but where we actually feel like, oh, this is enough. This is good. This is where I want to be. There is nothing more right now in this moment that I feel like I need or want, yes. right? I can tell you right now, Tara, it is enough. Yeah. And But tomorrow, it could be different, of course, right? See, here's the funny thing. Today, it's enough, right? Tomorrow, I might want that. But then when tomorrow ends, that then becomes enough. Do you understand what yeah. I mean? So I'm still becoming a bit of me, but I always cap it so I don't think too far ahead. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a beautiful thing, Jeff. And a, and an unusual thing. I'm very thankful, Tara. Mm. You know, I'm very I'm very thankful for you. Oh, thanks, Jeff. Coming back into this conversation with me after I know we had conversations in the past, right? This is what it's, it's all about. Tara. It's been a while, yeah. right? But isn't this it's been beautiful? A while. It's lovely, isn't it? You know, by it all is. means, um, you, you remember how we talked about the fact that, hey, Tara, we can go off topic, we can go on topic. Keep in mind, we've pretty much gone for like one and a half hours. We've gone, <laughs> we've gone all over the place. We oh, yeah. have. That's what I wanted to achieve. Yeah. 
And um, when I do these conversations with people, I have zero expectations. Mm -hmm. Every single time I walk out of conversation, I absolutely love it (laughs) (laughs) because there's no expectations. So Tara, I know we've gone on for quite a fair bit. I think I need to bring you back for podcast two, three, four, five, six, <laughs> seven, eight, nine, ten. I think you're going to become a bit of a recurring guest. I just know it. I think you're uh, going to be seeing me very quickly. No, not at all. Not at all. It's um, this is a conversation, Tara. I hope you felt that this was a conversation. This wasn't an interview. This is just yeah. you and I over the course of knowing each other for 25 years, just having a conversation. Um, I, I did even get to do a lightning round with you, but I don't think it was needed. Um, <laughs> so Tara, any sort of final words? Because we've gone everywhere. Any final yeah. words? Yeah, I, I, I think everything's been said, right? I, mm. I think the only thing I would say is this to me is testament of meaning, right? Like we are 12 year old kids who get thrown into the same class. What was it, JAG? Was our class called JAG? Yes, it was. <laughs> yeah, right? You actually like, remembered. We were named after I like, remember. Um, I and remember we were JAG. JAG. Wow, yep. Like we're thrown into this class together, right? We have no, we've never gone to a primary school together. We don't know each other. Um, and we pretty well spend the next, you know, six years. Uh, is it six years you're in high school? Six years? Yeah, six years. Um, in and out of each other's classes, right? Pretty well. I think we've spent, we've been in each other's classes for the entirety of the six years. Oh, we're, we're like, we're like secret best friends, I think, Tara. I think we are. Like, I think we've been like hiding this in the world for a long time. Yeah. But like six years, we're in each other's classes, right? Um, and they're pivotal, pivotal years of your life, like absolutely pivotal years of your life. And and you can contact me, you know, as you said, like what the last time we had spoken before recently was what, 2011, you said? Yeah. And, it, and it's a joy. Like it was like the other night I came out of it and it was like an absolute joy for me. And it was also just, you know, life impacting because I walked away and I was like, everything that we spoke about, everything that you said to me, I took away and I thought about it and I mulled it over and I, I turned it over and I, I, put it in, I put it into the, the thresher of my understanding and tried to work out what this meant to me, right? And so to me, this is, this is meaning, right? Like that our lives could continue to um, intertwine over the course of 25 years at, at moments that, were, that are fairly pivotal and impacting for us. Um, so I guess that's the whole point of it to me is like these moments and everything else in life to me are meaning. Um, and it's just a matter of whether we understand it. It's just a matter of whether we accept it or if we attach to it or we don't. Um, but I'm I grateful. Think, for I think we should definitely enjoy it. Um, yeah. So we've got maybe six more hours of enjoyment <laughs> because <laughs> once it hits midnight, it's gone. Yeah. <laughs> um, but- we're each other's history then, right? We are. We become each other's history. We are. But doesn't, that, that doesn't mean we can't recreate it again. Um, exactly. Everything passed. Good, good, bad, it will pass. So let's enjoy it for what it is. I had a fantastic conversation with you, Tara. Um, my final question to you, Tara. Mm-hmm. Do you, is there more for you to mull over? Yes. <laughs> yes. Got it. It's 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 not ending for me ever. So tell you what, tell you what. Remember how we talked about those questions about you know how you define your mission, mm-hmm. uh, why is it so important to you, and what do you what feeling do you get out of the mission? I would mm-hmm. love for you, I would love to hear those answers from you when the time comes. Yeah, sounds great. Lovely. So Tara, have a lovely night. Absolute Thanks. pleasure. Um, let's enjoy it. Sounds good. Thanks, Jeff.